Hi, everyone, and welcome. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Brian O'Donnell. I'm a DHIS2 implementer at the HISP Center at the University of Oslo. Uh, today, we'll be having a webinar on non-communicable disease data in national HMIS, rapid reviews from four countries. So we'll have um, representatives from four different uh, DHIS2 countries talking about how uh, they collect NCD data in their national health, inf health management information systems. Um, I, before we get started, I just wanted to set us up uh, with a quick uh, agenda. So first, we'll give a background and purpose. Then we'll go in directly into the rapid reviews of the NCD data. And then we'll have wrap up and acknowledgements afterwards. Um, we will be taking questions between each country presentation. So if you have questions for the participants, go ahead and um, either raise your hand in the chat or we um, put it in the chat for the Zoom link, or you can also go to the uh, COP thread as well, and drop your questions in there for them. Um, I'm also going to start with just the world's fastest overview of NCD trends, just to put this um, put our presentations into context. So as many of you here know, due to global demographic changes and improved treatment for infectious diseases, the world is experiencing an increasing burden from non-communicable diseases in their health systems. Uh, this pattern is especially significant in Africa and other regions where NCD is frequently adopted, especially within overstretched health systems, adding an additional burden. Um, already, the WHO estimates that 80% of premature death from NCDs currently occurs in low- and middle-income countries. And if we look at disability-adjusted life years, we see that NCD burden for the last quarter century has uh, really increased globally and also regionally in Africa, as well as in every country that we'll see presented today. Um, if we decompose this uh, regional death rate and project them into the future as well, then we can see which NCD categories we're really talking about as pushing this transition. So by 2050, the, the top five causes of disease across Sub-Saharan Africa, um, as well as every country presenting today, will include cardiovascular events, uh, cancers, diabetes, and kidney diseases. Um, but this shift is not just happening into the future, I should add. It's, it's also happening right now. So you could, should consider that by 2026, for example, uh, cardiovascular diseases will replace respiratory infections and TB as the number one cause of death in Sub-Saharan Africa. Brian? One moment, please. We're having messages that people are not able to see your slides or what you're sharing. Is there something you need to change on your end? Um, oh. I will resume uh, the sharing. Okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> um, great. So this was just the background of the NCD trends. And also talking about the, sub, um, the decomposed death rates and projecting them to the future in Sub-Saharan Africa, we can see which NCD categories are pushing this transition. Um, so by 2026, cardiovascular diseases will replace respiratory infections as the number one cause of death in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, moving on to the next slide, um, we can see that the world has made a strong commitment to tackle the challenge of NCDs as ready. As you all likely know, SCG 3.4 states that countries should reduce by one third premature mortality from NCDs. Um, but progress has stagnated somewhat and most countries are not on track for this. So even before the COVID pandemic, uh, in fact, only 14 countries are on track to meet this target long-term. Um, moving on to the next slide here. Uh, to combat this trend, over the last 10 years, the WHO has released a number of technical guidance documents to support integration of NCD service delivery. Uh, this includes the PEN package and HEARTS guidance, and it's also offered frameworks to strengthen data systems for NCDs. And really, a lot of this came together with the NCD facility-based monitoring guidance that was shared in November of 2022. Um, not only does this guidance propose 22 core indicators and um, op 59 optional indicators uh, to monitor primary care interventions for NCDs, but it also emphasizes the importance of digital tools to collect longitudinal patient indicators, which are especially important for long-term management of chronic NCD conditions. Uh, so this expert review has also um, really fundamentally highlighted that Routine data for monitoring um, are an essential component for tackling NCDs alongside other key parts such as registries, uh, surveys, and improving governance and policy structures. Um, so that brings us to today's discussion and where this has all started. Um, so from a landscape analysis at the HIST Center, we've seen that at least 30 countries have integrated NCD data into their national HMIS system. 
And to, so to support this further, we wanted to first undertake some rapid NCD data review of uh, select country HMIS. And you know, let's just let's see what's out there and what the data gaps are and really use that as a springboard to improve NCD quality and data use. Um, so with that, I'll, um, I'll move on to our first presenter, uh, Seed Hussein from HISP Ethiopia. Uh, Seed, if you're there and wouldn't mind uh, sharing your slides, that'd be great, thanks. Thank you, everybody. Uh, my name is Seyed Hussein. I'm uh, leading uh, HISP Ethiopia. Uh, we have been supporting the Ministry of Health here uh, uh, for the past seven years in uh, customizing, implementing, capacity building, and other activities of DHS2. Uh, since then, uh, we have been integrated within the ministry. Uh, it is Ethiopia itself as an office was organized in 2023. Uh, so it's a fairly uh, young organization. Uh, so I, in my uh, presentation today, I will uh, try to cover what kind of data we are collecting in Ethiopia regarding uh, uh, NCDs. So my presentation will cover, uh, give you some background, will tell you about what kind of indicators we have, what kind of HMS strategy TPA is following, uh, what data is currently being collected. Uh, as Brian uh, mentioned, there is a kind of trend going on all over the world. We'll try to mention that. And uh, how uh, NCD data is being uh, covered in other systems, health systems and uh, what kind of challenge we have, and we have some conclusion, and if we have time, we can give you some kind of demo about the system. So Ethiopia, uh, like any other developed country, is going through uh, the, this transition uh, Brian talked about. Uh, uh, this is demonstrated in the high uh, number of communicable diseases and the kind of uh, attention it's getting nowadays. Uh, and, and the WHO's NCD uh, progress monitor 2022, uh, reported that 43% of uh, days in Ethiopia is coming from NCD, and 70% of the plurality of premature mortality is coming from NCD again. This is the WHO study released in 2022. Uh, there are other studies showing that uh, more and more diseases are coming uh, from uh, NCDs than the communicable diseases. Uh, so, on the other hand, uh, this is being uh, shown in, uh, that. NCD is currently uh, highest in the urban areas uh, than rural, but even in the rural areas, the impact is being seen. Uh, the program Ethiopia uh, has a goal of promoting healthy lifestyles, reducing risk factors, providing of evidence-based clinical and public health interventions. As you can see here, it's more uh, on the prevention side. It's focusing on the prevention side changing lifestyle, reducing risk factors. Uh, the diseases they are focusing on include cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, uh, chronic respiratory diseases, cancer, eye health, uh, and other major uh, initiatives. Uh, the objectives of this initiative uh, is focused on uh, five uh, major things. One is strengthening, strengthening capacity across the board. Uh, the second one is reducing modifiable risk factors. The third one is strengthening and re or reorienting health system to tackle NCDs. And uh, the other one is strengthening surveillance and research. And at last, promotion uh, of international cooperation and advocacy are to be used as strategy to tackle uh, the NCD uh, problem. Uh, here, as you can see, there is a strong focus on surveillance and research. Uh, that's where the data comes in. The focus on TD oriented indicators has increased uh, because of this, uh, along with the disease burden. Uh, the indicator reference that the ministry uh, has governs the indicators that are generated from the routine data collection systems uh, all the way to the committee level facilities, uh, from uh, community level facilities all the way to uh, referral hospitals. Uh, if you see, uh, if you go back like uh, the second last indicator revision in 2018, only uh, three indicators were available for NCD. Uh, focusing on survival cancer screening, uh, treatment uh, of survival lesions, and cataract op operations. Uh, the other indicators, though some of the data is being was being collected, but they were not given focus and uh, they were not being highlighted. But in 2021, uh, the 2021 revision, uh, considerable focus was given for NCDs uh, with 10 indicators focusing on hypertension, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cervical cancer, and cataract have been uh, added. This 
uh, on the indicator stack. Uh, uh, if you give, if we give you some uh, background about Ethiopian HMS, Ethiopia follows an integrated HMS strategy. Uh, previously, we used to have uh, uh, vertical fragmented reporting systems run by programs and uh, partners. Uh, this uh, was creating a lot of problems with data uh, quality problems, uh, the same data being reported with different figures, with different partners in different programs. So vertical reporting systems were avoided uh, in the spread of the new strategy with all data coming from the facilities via the routine health service delivery forms. Uh, we have only one service delivery forms that are uh, very long, like uh, 40, 40 uh, 50 pages. But uh, when the way when we send them into DHS, we have tried to uh, cut them into pieces and focus on other programs, even though it's coming through one department within the health facility. All this data is uh, currently being recorded by health information technicians, HITs. They are one of uh, the health workforce. They are counted as uh, part of the health workforce. Uh, so they are trained at uh, TVETs, these uh, technical and vocational schools. Uh, they are uh, trained on how to collect health data, how to interpret health data, and how to uh, do some quality analysis and reporting. So this has helped uh, eliminate fragmentation of reporting systems and promoted uh, unified HMIS rather than program-focused systems. Uh, currently, as I earlier I said earlier, we have uh, 10 indicators, but these 10 indicators, when we uh, come to the actual data collected, uh, we have about 29 of them. Uh, regarding hypertension, we have screening data. Uh, we have two data elements, one uh, segregated by agent six, the other one by result. We have treatment data being collected by agent six, by treatment type, and by enrollment type. Uh, we have number of cohorts, uh, those enrolled uh, to care six months prior. Uh, we would, the uh, government wants to follow if the treatment is successful or not. And we have treatment outcomes as well. Uh, the same with cardiovascular diseases. We have uh, data about high-risk individuals uh, by risk category and agent six. The other one, we have treatment by type of treatment and agent six again. Uh, we, when it comes to diabetes, we have screening, uh, uh, treatment uh, by agency, diabetic type, treatment type, en enrollment type, uh, number of cohort like uh, uh, hypertension and treatment outcome. Uh, we have, uh, on the other hand, cervical cancer, uh, again, on screening, uh, treatment and outcome. And we have cataract surgery performance, even the indicator is the total number of surgeries performed across uh, the country. So if you see here, the focus goes through all the uh, workflows. Uh, the focus is on screening, trying to identify how many people are affected by uh, these uh, NCDs. Uh, and uh, the, there is a, a kind of data quality check going, uh, check going going between the uh, agent sex distribution and the result distribution. And sometimes when it comes to treatment, enrollment time as well. The government wants to uh, uh, track if every uh, screened and identified uh, case is treated uh, and uh, the outcome is uh, followed uh, using the cohort system. Uh, this is the, uh, an example of how the data is collected. As you can see here, NCD is being collected along with the malaria and the NCD form. There is, we have a malaria, NCD, and NCD form. As you can see, we have three uh, kinds of data sets. One is focused on only health post. This is the community uh, level uh, data, uh, the community level data, this one, health post. I'm, I'm sorry, I have to go back. Uh, the health post is community level data. Uh, the focus here is only on screening. Uh, the health extension workers here uh, who go house to house and uh, screen uh, every member of the household if they have uh, any uh, uh, risk for cardiovascular, hypertension, or diabetes, diabetes or uh, many types of cancers. And whenever they identify them, uh, they refer to them to the health centers, which are the next level. So the health center, the hospitals, and the clinics have another form. Um, they uh, uh, focus not only on screening, but, it, but they all focus on also uh, the treatment and cohort follow-up. Uh, another one, we have a new kind of facility being introduced in 2023. Uh, that is uh, an elevated uh, type of health post that 
uh, not only we could perform community services, but also some treatment services like health centers. So they have uh, a mix of uh, services for health, mostly in health centers. So uh, this is the way the data is collected. As you can see here, whenever data is collected, it highlights if there is any data quality issue in red. Uh, for instance, here, it's supposed to be the individual screening by agent six has to be equal to by result of screening. If these two numbers are not the same, this uh, highlighted uh, data quality issue is always uh, there. Whenever, for instance, here, if the result by type of screening uh, comes through 54, this uh, message will uh, disappear. Uh, the other type of data Ethiopia collects regarding NCD is the morbidity and mortality data. Uh, we have a unified version of ICD-11. We have modified it uh, for Ethiopian context. It, it, has, it collects data about both morbidity and mortality. Uh, it collects about uh, 2,525 plus diseases. Uh, all the data here is disaggregated by age and sex. Uh, we have six age groups. Uh, sex plus there is the disaggregation of uh, morbidity and mortality uh, through our treatment option combos. And we have uh, treatment modality as well, where the service is given. We go if it's a days or kids, if it's at the outpatient clinic or inpatient clinic, that data is uh, captured that way. Uh, on top of uh, the national priority diseases, uh, as we say, said uh, in the uh, service delivery form, like uh, hypertension, uh, diabetes, uh, cardiovascular disease, cervical cancer, and uh, cataract, they are here more diseases are given in past as well. Asthma, breast cancer, eye health, uh, uh, other types of cancer uh, uh, are uh, also uh, highlighted. Uh, we have a specialized uh, a module, a specialized application to collect data uh, for these 2,500 uh, uh, plus uh, diseases. As you can see, we are collecting data uh, only when, when there is a case or it is happening at the facility. Uh, so these data uh, then are uh, analyzed using a uh, conducted uh, report form, uh, with, which I will demo uh, later. So when it comes to other systems beyond DHS2, uh, there are EMRs at different health facilities, both uh, private and public. Uh, they are starting to use the Ethiopian simple band version of uh, ICD-11 uh, to collect uh, diagnosis and treatment data. Uh, about the, the implementation of these guidelines vary among uh, hospitals. It's more implemented in public hospitals than private hospitals. Uh, some of the private hospitals are using uh, the full ICD-11, uh, but most of them are transitioning to uh, the simple simplified version. And uh, all this data is at the end of the month is uh, aggregated and sent to uh, the ministry for uh, reporting purposes. At the lowest level, at the community level, uh, uh, as I showed, there is a routine service delivery uh, data reported through DHIS2 uh, that's aggregate, but the CHIS collects individual data uh, concerning screening related uh, activities. And mostly uh, the activities here are uh, that the data is captured uh, through uh, clinical questionnaire. Sometimes they use uh, some device like uh, 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 blood, uh, high, uh, blood pressure monitor, uh, but mostly the data is uh, captured service given to a clinical questionnaire and the data is captured like that. Uh, here there are uh, questionnaires and algorithms uh, to tell if a person has asthma, diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, breast, cervical and prostate cancers, epilepsy, and eye health. So uh, the uh, CHS has about 19 packages, including antenatal care, child health, uh, wash, and one of uh, the packages is focused on uh, NCDs. Uh, but uh, all this is not without challenges. Data quality is still a challenge in the country. Uh, errors are happening when data is being captured on the registries and the registers uh, at the facilities when they are carried from uh, these registers and, uh, and added, and then when they are returned into the DHS. And uh, uh, some evidence shows that there are some uh, edits after the data is recovered that way. 
these some of these uh, issues are being identified and tackled by supportive supervision, but still the problem remains. The other uh, big problem is data use practice is low. Uh, maybe one of the reasons uh, the data quality is low as well. Uh, when they start uh, using the data, they can identify that it has some issues and they uh, can uh, re uh, rectify the problem and start uh, improve the quality and start using the data. Uh, until uh, the current uh, version of uh, uh, DHS for updates, uh, upgrades. We didn't have standardized dashboards dedicated for NCDs. Uh, we have some visualizations based on uh, the indicators identified, but they are not standardized uh, uh, using the protocols uh, uh, prepared by the ministry and the shared across uh, who own uh, health workers using DHS. But uh, in the current uh, finalized version of uh, the upgrade cycle, uh, which we finished uh, this past two months. Uh, we have standardized dashboards focusing on uh, NCD uh, as part of uh, the other uh, uh, customization uh, attempts. As a conclusion, uh, uh, we can say that routine service collects only a few NCDs. Still, uh, NCDs, uh, there, may be, uh, there, there is there maybe a need for, to focus on uh, other NCDs as well, as well, like asthma. Uh, but the focus, uh, whenever we are selecting in Ethiopia for uh, selecting indicators, is it has to uh, we have to follow these four rules. It has to be standardized across all facilities and uh, across all partners. Uh, the name of and the definition of an indicator has to be uh, understood by everybody. It has to be simplified. Uh, it has to be integrated with the system as well. And it has to be institutionalized. When you say institutionalized, we have to have the tools at the facility to uh, capture the data from the uh, patient cards into registers, uh, tally sheets, and all. So unless we have all these uh, all these tools in place, all these uh, considerations in place, indicator is not elected and integrated in the national system. But uh, in every revision cycle, there are requests to add more uh, more data elements and indicators. But NCD is one of uh, the areas given focus in the last cycle of indicator revision. Uh, morbidity and mortality is the least different by type of facility. Uh, uh, another one, another uh, highlight is uh, the community uh, level is expected to collect data about only 94 diseases. Uh, among them, uh, there are some uh, identification of NCDs, but uh, the application doesn't limit capturing data only for uh, this 94 disease because the diagnostic capacity at, for instance, the health centers are expected to capture only 700 diseases, but if there is better diagnostic capacity there, they are allowed to capture data uh, pertaining to uh, NCDs or other diseases uh, configured for hospitals. So it depends on the diagnostic capacity, the service provided, uh, the number of staff, we have all these in consideration whenever we are reporting uh, this. Uh, if you give me a time, I can uh, give you some demo on the system. We have a, a sample system in, in, in local here. I can uh, switch my screen. <clears throat> um, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Yeah, so this is a, a local uh, version of DHS2 uh, with uh, some fake data we configured for, uh, for demonstration purposes. As you can see here now, we have uh, this prefix, uh, HMS23, is uh, to be removed uh, when we release it down uh, to uh, the user. But as you can see here, we have some standardized dashboards pertaining to specific uh, uh, service and use groups. So we have about uh, seven uh, indicators configured here. Of course, users are allowed to uh, configure more visualizations for themselves and there are guidelines for that. So as you can see here, we have proportion of uh, women uh, still for cervical cancer, uh, treated for cervical lesion, uh, and there is a cohort of blood pressure uh, for hypertension, uh, uh, the, uh, blood pressure for uh, diabetes again, uh, as CVD uh, receiving treatment, uh, number of Cataract surgeries per million, and we have at last 
uh, visualization for mean time in the subway, which is not uh, highlighted as the other LCDs. Uh, to show you some uh, how the data entry is going on for uh, uh, the disease for instance. So as you can see here, we have the period. We have, by the way, we have our own data entry applications uh, because our requirements are different from other countries. So uh, we use select uh, uh, departments, uh, if it's uh, inpatient or outpatient, statistics in the inpatient outpatient department, either if it's a case or death. And uh, once you select that, you have a, a, a row uh, to capture a data, a new data about a disease. Uh, here, all the 2,500, uh, more than 2,500 diseases are here. You select the data uh, you want to capture, and uh, we you can capture like that. Uh, you can uh, the type one, type two, you just capture, and you, when you select another disease, uh, this row is uh, pushed down. Uh, this application has has helped us simplify the process because uh, capturing data for two thousand five hundred diseases in a, a normal uh, data entry application was very heavy and it was not convenient for us. Uh, the way we uh, analyze data is also different here. Uh, this is uh, requested by the ministry to we focus on uh, top ten diseases, top ten diseases. So we have the department here. You can simplify by department. So if you say this last uh, 12 months and uh, generate a report. It will give you uh, uh, the uh, disease incidence, the number of diseases See. occurred at by first meeting, uh, ordering them. Uh, See, we're, we're running out a bit out of time here. Thank you for okay, the okay. demo, but do you think you yeah. could um, look at some of the, the questions in the in the chat okay. to, to wrap up okay. in the next few minutes? Okay, okay. So uh, let me... Are the tracer indicators directly adopted from the global DHS metadata or where they adopted from country level KPIs or measurement R2 DHS? I think uh, whenever they are, uh, when, whenever we are uh, selecting indicators, uh, there is a, a, a team of uh, people uh, that are proposing indicators, but the selection is done uh, with partners, uh, programs, and MND people. Uh, there are many considerations given, and even international uh, indicator uh, alignment is considered as well. But at the end of the day, the national uh, requirements are given more emphasis. I don't see other questions. Uh, does, your, does your dashboard provide indicators at the facility level? Yes, uh, these dashboards I, I tried to show. Uh, the, they are shared all the, to uh, more, all, all the users all with the analysis privilege. They can see the current uh, configured uh, dashboards or they can uh, configure their own, uh, which sometimes is the case. Uh, uh, I see following items missing, cellular cancer plus, uh, so cellular cancer in the disease and morbidity and mortality data, we have uh, cancer, uh, as you can see from uh, the age disaggregations, we have uh, uh, starting from uh, less than one all the way to plus 65. So uh, if there is a, a disease occurrence in any uh, uh, age, it's captured. And if it fits that specific uh, age group and sex, for instance, it, if it's the uh, scrotal cancer, uh, women are avoided, uh, if it is just like that. If it's not applying to a specific age group, it's not avoided. Uh, uh, I don't see any other questions. If you have uh, more, I can uh, entertain. Uh, thank you yeah. so much for the presentation, Seed. Um, we can take more questions at the end if there's uh, if there's time. Okay. Uh, next, we have uh, JP Matali presenting from uh, from his Rwanda. JP, if you could uh, kindly share your screen now to present your slides. Okay. Uh, 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 thank you, Brian, and uh, thank you, Phil, Said, for the presentation. I'm Jean-Paul Mutari from his Rwanda. I'm going to, to make a short presentation about uh, the NCD data in, uh, in, in Rwanda. 
Um, uh, so I'm a system admin integration team at East Rwanda, and I'm presenting this data uh, with permission from the Minister of Health. Uh, so uh, Rwanda faces a high burden of non communicable um, diseases, and uh, they account for more than 50% of all deaths. And the Ministry of Health uh, uh, monitored in city burden in Rwanda through indicators in the health formation system based on DHS2. Uh, the facilities and the community report, both aggregate and uh, individual case, or either on daily basis for individual data and uh, for monthly data for aggregated data. And uh, the data or the the end in city cases uh, the, uh, vary by facility. Uh, so there are those which are uh, can be reported at facility level or, or community level and also go up to the hospital and uh, it's all done at the public and the facility uh, public and private facilities so the the type of uh, data being collected uh, uh, three categories if I may say there are all type of NCD, uh, but they're so part of, uh, of, of prevention, which uh, involves uh, like a cancer screening and uh, other like a tension diabetes screening, but also uh, awareness campaign for prevention. Uh, so as I said, the, the level of reporting is uh, the whole level of health Care system in Rwanda from the community up to the the, the uh, uh, hospital, and they, they report either on daily basis or monthly, and uh, so they, they they cover all either screening, diagnostic, treatment, and uh, and the, the awareness, and for to ensure the data reported are. Uh, the quality, normally the process uh, involves uh, data verification before uh, before sending the report for, for monthly data. And for individual level data, uh, with DHS2, there are so many controls which uh, helps capture uh, information uh, within the allowed uh, 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 minimal uh, the errors. And so from the my screen here, you can see, for example, a screen where we do uh, community screening where the individual data is, is input and then we can have the disaggregation by age, by sex and uh, all the the number or if the value is very high, then we know the person, the, the person is a high risk of uh, of, uh, of NCD. So the data quality approval in process they involve the submission of data for monthly data in DHS2, uh, but there are a series of uh, meetings to validate data from the point of collection up to the point of entry. And uh, the data set is located on 10th ten, of the following month. And uh, if you need to change, you need to uh, ask permission or to verify why you are going to change uh, of this data. Uh, so the data are currently in in uh, Rwanda HMI system based on VHS2, is used for for decision making, and uh, mainly uh, for planning. Uh, the these data are uh, used mainly for resource allocation, as you uh, on the first uh, page of my presentation I said the NCDs uh, uh, 
uh, uh, takes a, a huge chunk of death. So these uh, days, the uh, most of the resources are now directed to uh, prevention, but also to treatment. The other part is uh, healthcare system management. Uh, there have been uh, uh, now uh, specialist clinics which are being set up after analyzing all these trends of NCDs. Uh, the good example may be the Global Health Equity University, uh, which is a, cent uh, a cancer center of excellence, which uh, also allows uh, the enrollment of international students uh, to uh, for, for this cancer center. And also, uh, there are several community health initiatives. Uh, in Rwanda, every two weeks, there is uh, in, in cities, major cities, there is like a car free day uh, on the Sunday, uh, where people come to exercise, but also to do uh, NCD screening. Uh, the data also is used for international yeah. collaboration and the funding, where uh, after getting all this data, uh, the, these are presented to funders for collaboration, but also for research and innovation. So these are uh, examples of uh, dashboards which are produced within the, the DHS2. Uh, for example, here we can see the top 10 cancer cases by, by the country, and each user of this application can see the top cancers in their, in their, in their district or their facility by period. So this is a dashboard at the national level. They have a map of the whole country and they can have cases total uh, by gender, or they can do, because this is an individual data here, they can do uh, by age or by any other criteria. Uh, so this is another example of uh, uh, a dashboard to monitor community screening. As I said, uh, more emphasis has been done now on prevention. So. Uh, each district has a target population of uh, 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 people who are older than 50, uh, 35 years of age because those are the the, uh, the main uh, people who can be uh, can get NCDs. So those are screened by by district. And they can monitor uh, how many people they are they are screening for the whole fiscal year, and the the graph here will be uh, turning into into green when they reach the the target uh, percentage, which is like eighty five percent for every year now. Uh, but there are some some. Uh, Still, some uh, uh, gaps in in the data in data utilization uh, where we uh, not all data collected is currently being used. So there are still opportunities to explore the data being collected, and also uh, the integration of different platforms. Uh, uh, maybe going other to other system which are used apart from the main HMIS. Uh, there is a cancer registry. Uh, this is also based on DHS2. There is NCD screening community, which is uh, specifically for hypertension, diabetes. Uh, this is a DHS2 as well. But there is an electronic medical reports uh, module for uh, NCDs, which is used the health facilities. Uh, this currently is not integrated with any of these. Uh, there is a, a stock of the trusted drugs, and there is a CRVS which has uh, all deaths uh, on individual individually. So the these individual uh, data collects uh, uh, patient data 
and uh, they are they are they are run like uh, separately. So the cancer registry has only cancer data. The NCD tracker has other screening, and this EMR has now the the follow up of patient who are positive. Uh, so this is uh, uh, how the community screening flow is done currently, where the in the community uh, on Capri Day, for example, or any other day that is, uh, the facility has uh, chosen for screening, they can go and enter individual information in DHS2, and DHS2 uh, will inform whether the person, the person uh, is is uh, uh, suspected of having either hypertension or diabetes, mm -hmm. and uh, if it's positive, they are then referred to hospital to confirm the case. And if the the the, the case is confirmed, that's when the patient is enrolled in the EMR for follow up. Uh, so this is. Uh, 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 community screening where they do uh, screening and then they intake from the shed DHS. Uh, the future uh, plan now uh, for uh, using uh, this uh, information to combat any cities are uh, mostly uh, capacity building for data use. But there are a lot of data as I said. Uh, individual data being collected, but not fully exploited. Uh, there is a, a development of these data quality dashboards and also continue the continuous integration of different systems. Uh, so the, in Rwanda, the, the HMIS uh, collect these data uh, and there is also an ongoing uh, initiative to continue by individuals so that they can have all the details and then enhance uh, the data management. So uh, I, I will end by thanking uh, the East Center of Vastavoso for uh, facilitating the assessment that we did, and also the Rwanda Biomedical Center. Thank you. Thanks very much for sharing, John Paul. I think we have a few questions in the chat, if you want to take a look at those. Um, first from Farshad, would you please let us know how did you calculate NCD screening coverage since for hypertension, diabetes, and cervical cancer, all denominators are different? Paul, are you there for questions? Yes, sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> so the uh, the how how this calculation is made? It, this is a just a, a calculation of how many people were screened for different uh, disease for hypertension for uh, diabetes. So we have a, a total number of people uh, over thirty five years of age. And uh, the data now is entered individually. So if a, if a person is screened for hypertension, so we take that one. If a, the same person uh, uh, is, uh, is screened for diabetes, it's not, it's not counted uh, uh, again. So it's, it's number of pe people who are screened. If we have other dashboard for specific uh, disease for hypertension alone for uh, 
diabetes uh, are on, but that's the like the total number of people who've come for screening. Yeah, this the screen I was sharing was only the, the total number of people, but we have specific for hypertension, diabetes, for cancer. Yeah, yeah, sure. They, 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 we have, as I said, we have uh, individual data. So we, we, we count uh, uh, by, 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 by sex as well. So we know the, if it's a person is a male, so they, they, they are not even a, a screened. If you do go to data entry, you will not see uh, cervical, uh, cervical cancer because it's male. It's, it will be automatically hidden. So. Those will not be counted in the denomination. Okay. Before we go to our next uh, speaker, I think there was one more question from Tony above that. Uh, how did you decide on indicators for the NCD program? Any specific interventions you can mention that were supported by tracker indicators? Supported by tracked indicators. Uh, uh, yes, as I said, uh, uh, oh, uh, one of the specific uh, intervention I mentioned was the setup of a, uh, a, a cancer center of excellence, which is an university as well. Uh, so that one was set up after finding out that now cancer is one of the uh, uh, highest cause of mortality and uh, uh, after that this center was established and uh, turned into a university uh, so that they can handle this uh, this one of the the, 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 uh, the option or the results of this uh, cancer but also there are also other uh, of our, uh, our community awareness activities, which are results of that, as I mentioned, there is a, a, a community screening, which I showed the, the, the dashboard, where everyone above 35 years age is targeted for screening. Great. Uh, thanks, JP. Um, next, since we're moving from east to west, uh, we'll be going to Malawi with uh, GIF and Noel. Um, I'm not sure if uh, they could please share their screens uh, to uh, start with the next presentation. Over. And if you have any more questions for JP, please leave them in the chat and then we can uh, get back to them at the end if we have time. Uh, no, no, it's supposed to take the presentation, yeah. Right. Thank you very much for promoting we have. So I'm going to present the landscape for NCDs in Malawi. This has been worked out with doing together with different partners. But then, uh, so I just wanted to explain that. In the introductory, we have many key players that have helped us in coming up with the data. We have been working with uh, this Malawi, uh, the Unima team, just to see how this, this could work out. Uh, trying to move to the next.
All right, thank you. I think so. As a vision, we're looking to improve the quality of life for people through reduced mobility and HIV. Yeah, premature mobility. And promote pleasure. Part of our mandate is strategic leadership, patient, program operations, service provision, organization, resource This is just a snapshot pertaining to, to the burden of cities in Malawi, and I'm currently there on 32% of deaths in Malawi. But from the WHO report that we just had, uh, 20, 23, Down there on the cardio conditions you have high percentage so uh, yeah. uh, now you are happy audible. I don't know whether uh, people on the call can hear him properly. Okay, maybe uh, that okay now. Yes, and maybe much better, thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. All right, so I was just talking about the burden of NCDs in Malawi, and I said they account to about 32% of deaths in Malawi, and 40% uh, of deaths are contributed by NCD versus the common cover diseases. And the cardiovascular conditions, you have hypertension, you have 16.1 to 32. These are figures that are coming from the state survey 2009 and 2017, and general cardiovascular at 8.9. Our well, chronic respiratory is at 5.1 for asthmas, and cancers contribute 16% of LCD values. Our diabetes uh, is at 1.66%, with uh, accidents at 3.5. And uh, I just wanted to show you the trends of hypertension of all the conditions that we are currently tracking in our NCD uh, in the DHIS2. This is excluding the PEN plus. And currently, we have figures around 30,000. And uh, this is, uh, we have around, uh, yeah, 30,000 plus. But then these figures are just showing what is in the districts and the selected health facilities. So I will explain more on this graph as I continue the presentation. What have we done on data management efforts? So, Currently in Malawi, we have facility level data, which is a paper based NCD register. And then we do have the Yendanafe, which is being uh, implemented in NENO uh, by partners in health. And then we have the hypertension and diabetes EMR. This is being supported by Diabetes Campus, uh, where we're trying now to get most of this information digitally done. So this is a, an ongoing work and the advocated data sets. Pertaining to patient management, we usually use the MCT MasterCards as they have the continuum of care for all MCT clients since uh, enrollment and their cost of life. At the community level, we have the IT MCT module, which is being developed. And currently, we are finalizing the screening protocols for hypertension and diabetes. This is the starting point, and we hope we can add it in the module as uh, time goes by under screening conditions. Within the HMIS, which I said the DHIS2, we do have the PEN plus facility matter reporting form, and we do have also the quarterly reporting form. This is just an example of the NCD module in the ITIS. Uh, these are some of the information that we look for. There is the uh, household register, personal register, and then you have now the non-communicable disease. And now we are also looking into the NCT palliative. So we are trying to align most of the work that we're doing also to the palliative program. And uh, pertaining to screening, these are some of the questions, these are some of the work that we're looking into. So we do have the screening questions for hypertension, diabetes, depression, and schizophrenia. So this is just a start. Uh, that's what we've been working on with uh, Yanima for the past year, together with uh, CIMET. And we're hoping to be concluding this and rolling out later on next year in 2024, um, 2025. And uh, 
this is just a snapshot of the indicator. It's not exhaustive, but just um, just to appreciate what we have at national level, we do have the road traffic accident mortality, the suicide prevention, and at program level, we look at on NCD in road and on treatment. And then we do also have the pen class. Uh, when we look into congenital heart disease, the rheumatic heart disease, sickle cell, type 1 and type 2 diabetes, and uh, we're also looking at the rheumatic heart disease. So this is just uh, selective indicators that we're tracking. There are more, uh, but then I think we can always discuss later on. Okay. So I just wanted to give you a snapshot on the reporting rates currently in the THIS team. Uh, on my left-hand side, you have the quarterly reporting form, and at least 60% of the districts are actually reporting on completeness, timeliness, and uh, we're now looking into the, how to address the other districts that we can well. Some of the challenges, I will explain them as we proceed to the other slides. On my right hand side is the pen plus. Uh, for the pen plus, we have to exclude Mango. We have to exclude Kasungu and Chengi as we are yet to go out. But then the rest of the districts, Karonga, Mango Chi, Meno, Chisi, Rumpi, and Salima, these are the districts that we have now established pen plus. And we're looking forward to scaling up. We just got some funds from that new, from that DHL Afro, and we'll be working with the country office on how we're gonna scale up and reach facilities. So a number of reporting facilities will be including that. We do also have the WDF, the World Diabetes Foundation, that will be scaling up in three more districts too. And we're hoping that with the Scottish plan that we've got will be managed also to scale up the ten plus services to four districts. So. We're looking forward to actually now finalizing some of the work on the pen plus, including the, 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 the contrary of the WHO pen by mid next year to ensure that all these are aligned and uh, we're having data interoperability. I will move on to the data and capacity gap. So, this is where I said I would well much. So, data collection gaps, we have that both. And then important facilities. As the current data we have in is coming from district hospital and selected health facilities, which means for Malawi we still under reported. And then we have also the private hospital and the Christian health uh, child facilities that also have yet started reporting. So I believe we are yet to define. The NCD burden apart from the state service. So we still have a long way to go, and we're looking forward as Minister of Health to ensure that we align as we try to strengthen the public institutions. On our mind, we're already thinking about what about the other institutions that are providing the services. And uh, pertaining to inadequate screening and data tools at community level, we use the word inadequate because currently we only screening for hypertension and diabetes. Uh, within the NCD program, I know cervical cancer is being screened and monitored through the reproductive health department. So, other conditions are the ones that we can do, whereby we like to have a very robust screening program for Malawi. But then now we have managed to train over 9,000 health surveillance assistants, and they have been implemented in committees and uh, meeting hubs. And they are able to do the screening to the communities. However, they are using rapid uh, this post rapid testing that we use, but haven't yet are linked to the THIS to so this is an area that we are trying to get to this particular conversation. And uh, we have the alignment of patient indicators with the property uh set by the no, no, well, could you try speaking a bit closer to the microphone? It's a bit hard to hear you again. Okay, so I was saying that uh, the alignment of the national level indicators with the global standardized indicators, which um, was said that by, by the WHO is incomplete, but the process has 
limited and we're looking forward to finalizing the program. And uh, as I said, the linkage between the community level data that is being collected now has to be linked to the DHI student. Today, uh, we have managed to compressively view the metadata and the uh, WHO indicator handle. So, so we have revisions to the handle. Uh, we managed to go to the workshop where we managed to revise the indicators and select the indicators that are prioritized for national level monitoring on the dashboard. And I managed to also see which one added to the market. And then I uh, took a presentation on the representation of the community. So, what this way, uh, the work that we're doing with the human is for life, just to ensure that we have got the back, uh, we have the stepping platform. So, thank you very much, I think, to the team that managed to organize this because we realized the gaps that we're having. And uh, this was so good. Uh, no, you, you are happy to go to the book. All right. Is that okay now? Uh, that's much better. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So, as I said, uh, we commenced the development of an interoperability module with facility level EMR. And uh, we have been working sessions with uh, World Diabetes Foundation towards incorporation of other service monitoring indicators and extension of HMI supporting tools to accommodate the new indicator needs. And uh, as I had said, most of the work is being done by partners, uh, but I would like to recognize also you know, coming in to have the comprehensive review of the metadata and also working to align to the WHO in the greater framework of STDs. So this is just part of the events that we have done for PENPA, the MRD PENPA. It was led by UNIMA and CIMED. And uh, we chose to have the data field review and global indicator alignment. This is supported by uh, UNIMA. And uh, this was a uh, uh, three day and uh, we managed to get the uh, so, you're breaking again. No, you're breaking. Is that better now? Uh, not too clear. I don't know the other people. But you're not too clear. Uh, yeah, it's it's not very clear. Can I suggest you move closer so, to the microphone? But we have a couple slides uh, left, so let's go through it. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, let's see. Is that clear? Is that better now? I'm not talking on top of my question. Okay, so. They have managed to get the capacity of the NCT vision of the data quality. So we targeted the NCT coordinators and uh, the data clients and the HMI services. And we're extending the HMI supporting forms to address the identified gaps and align with other initiatives. Uh, working on integrating the community health information system into the national HMIS. Uh, we have also worked on uh, interoperability of IGs with the facility that we have uh, revised the uh, IGs NCT tools in line with the new requirements. Progressive growth of IGs NCT module will be done in the next few months. So, then that's the end of my slides. Thank you. Apologies that maybe something is wrong with my brain. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe just to come in on the areas that it wasn't um, uh, audible, uh, I think on the 
on the areas where, on the planned activities. So after the activities that we conducted with the NCD review project that we had, we, we also looked at the WHO um, global standardized indicators for NCDs, and we aligned them with the uh, national uh, program level indicators that were configured for the program. So we also looked at the indicators that were uh, that were there already on the on the HMIS and the ones that the ministry needs but are not there yet. So we aligned with the uh, current national efforts to also look at which indicators can we adopt from the WHO uh, standardized indicators for NCDs and for other programs as well. So you would look at uh, cancer uh, programs, uh, the hypertension programs, uh, the, the diabetes programs as well. So uh, I think in the in the in the in the next uh, in, in the next phase uh, for for this implementation, we're going to uh, align what is also on the community level with what is at the facility level, and also uh, push this data into the HMIS for overall decision making. So basically, I think for the last uh, for the last um, uh, slide that he was presenting, uh, that's a, that that's what we are going to be doing. So there will be that validation of the NCD dashboards. So we started with um, with reviewing which indicators we want to include in the national NCD dashboards. So the indicators have been marked. We are yet to configure those dashboards as well in the HMIS. So yeah, I think I just wanted to add on that one. Thank you. I think now you can stop you. sharing. Yeah. Thank you, Gift and all, for the presentations. Are there any additional uh, questions before we move to our last speaker today? You can raise your hands or enter into the chat. Uh, I see a question from um, from Hanan Khalil earlier. Um, maybe it was already addressed, but has there been an evaluation of the system against a gold standard or survey? Maybe some data triangulation against uh, population health surveys. Gift, Noel, do you want to answer that? Sorry, can you come again? Sorry. There was a question in the chat. Has there been about has there been an evaluation of your system against a uh, gold standard or survey? Possibly comparing with population level health surveys or with other uh, indicator lists. Yes, uh, I think there have been, uh, so through CIMED, there are a couple of uh, surveys that are conducted within CIMED. So there's been a couple of them. And also there's this routine review of population data that's pushed in the DHIS2 against the data that we are collecting, yes. Thank you. If there are any more questions, uh, enter them into the chat and we'll try to get to them towards uh, the end of our last presentation here. Um, uh, again, uh, Oswald there for our last uh, presentation from Ghana. Oswald, you're good to go. Thank you for sharing your screen. Can I see my screen? Can you see your screen? Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Oswald. Uh, I'm presenting on behalf of Hipstan. So, by way of a little background, uh, we all do know that uh, NCDs are becoming a major cause of mortality in Sub Saharan Africa, particularly. And uh, to develop uh, targets and make decisions that are evidence-based towards reducing the burden of NCDs in, in, uh, in the world. Ghana as a sub -Saharan. the burden of the disease, especially in Ghana, about 13% uh, of Ghana's population, according to data from the Ghana Health Service and the WHO in 2022. Uh, 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 affected by cardiovascular disease, about 6.3% of the population is also affected. 
and then uh, about 24,000 new cancer cases are uh, uh, recorded annual of NCDs that we have as a country. And it is important to, to ensure that uh, we are able to measure the full views, the burden tax on our economy and then our health profile as a country. When it comes to the project, uh, what we aim to do was to try to improve the accuracy and use of NCD data within Ghana's health information management system. And so uh, as way of objectives, what we did was to do a rapid assessment of NCD data that is available routinely uh, in Ghana. So we evaluated all the data sets that were in the national HMIS that, that is DIMS2. And also as that I just and also try to see what the baseline understanding of the data scope and situations we can recommend going forward in an effort to consolidate all uh, NCD related data that is available in country. Uh, we were also targeting to do some training of our HMIS officers across them uh, going forward. Now, by way of methodology, what we did, as I indicated, was to do an, uh, an inventory of all the data sets, and after that, we identified the gaps that are currently in existence, and also looked at the individual level data uh, that is available on some systems across the country, and then uh, possibilities of integration. What were our key findings when it comes to data availability? Generally, uh, Ghana's HMI captured data at the facility level, and uh, we have in the country that reporting to the national HMIS. And uh, it is a mix from teaching hospitals right to uh, health centers and hospitals, and then community level clinics and what we call chip zones. Then we also do uh, have a mix of reporting of data into the HMIS system that includes uh, non communicable When it comes to all that, uh, the national HMIS had a host of uh, data sets that contained HMI uh, NCD data. Uh, notably, it's what they call the monthly OPD mobility returns that records new cases of all uh, case, uh, diseases that are diagnosed at OPD level. And so they have a data set that is submitted on a monthly basis by every that is into the national HMI section on non-communicable diseases, as you can see on the inset here, that deals with hypertension and all other uh, popular NCDs in there. We also, through the inventory, found out that the uh, country has recently deployed uh, a new CDs only that will deal with NCD screening at the facility level and also NCD diagnosis. That is trying to give a lot more detail uh, capture of data when it comes to NCDs, uh, apart from what we have on the monthly OPD mobility uh, reporting form. Uh, when it comes to data completeness for aggregate data, it's even uh, very bad for the OPD mobility data set. Uh, Nine percent completeness and uh, ten years for the country, and so that is the major source of NCD data on the national HMIS. The new custom ones that is the NCD specific data set for mobility and also for screening were only developed somewhere in 2022, and these are not fully deployed across the country yet. Uh, 
Yeah, so it's average in Arabia. I at the time of regards to event-based uh, data, uh, what we do found out was that the country also have what is called an event instance that deals with inpatient mobility uh, line listing that captures key demographic information of clinical of clients that are admitted into the extensive information about uh, about NCDs. And so that is one of, uh, apart from the OPD mobility data, event-based data, What the, one of the huge data sets that the country have is the event-based instance that contain NCD data. And this dates back to 2014. And so that is also about 10 years of NCD data that is available for you. Uh, across the country. Then we also uh, noted that there have uh, recently been some uh, pilot uh, deployments with NCD tracker for trying to set up an NCD registry for hypertension, diabetes, and then some childhood cancers. Uh, that is being piloted by a project called the Ghana Heart Initiative in some coastal uh, communities in the greater Accra region of Ghana. And then also the within the Ghana Health Service, there is a program called an, uh, National uh, Communi uh, Communicable, Non-Communicable Disease Program within the Ghana Health Service setup. And so there is also a pilot at that level that is trying to uh, move from aggregate data into capturing uh, NCD data using the tracker instance as uh, Ghana have extensive uh, implementation when it comes to tracker across the country. So that was also with regards to uh, event-based data. What we found out was that uh, it's a key thing uh, to deal with the uh, of the data because and as a major source, one of the discrepancies we noted was that as a country, the lower level facilities that the chief zones and clinics have been discouraged from diagnosing uh, non-communicable diseases as they may not. That is one of the things that we uh, identified. And also some inconsistencies in reporting when it comes to the private facilities as not all private facilities currently report into the national HMI. So there is some level of gap when it comes to data availability on it, especially from the private, and then the very low health facilities as chip zones, uh, uh, lack of national uh, deployment of the new NCD specific data sets that have recently been developed is also one of the gaps that we identified was uh, had to do with data integration and trying to create synergies because uh, the country currently is deploying an EMR for all teaching hospitals, regional hospitals, and hospitals that is containing the clients. And this uh, is not currently integrated to some extent with the national uh, HMIS, which is linked to. And so, we think that it is one of the groundbreaking things that we can do to be able to uh, pull line listed client data into the national HMI so that we can begin to match that with what we have on the aggregate data set to be able to initiate uh, triangulation attempts and then improve our data capture and all that. Then the other thing we can we can improve on has to do with uh, linkages with uh, reporting linked with international service to try to do some comparison. So it's one of the areas we think uh, once we get all our data integrated and push into the national HMIS, that can be then be triangulated with the demographic health survey 
results for the country and also be dashboard on the institute to uh, data use and all that. For the future, we think that the EMR and the event-based instance of the Ghana Health Service is one key area that can be dealt with. And then also the NCD tracker package that is being piloted can be enhanced and expanded to all NCD clinics and hospitals. And then we can be able to then improve on record management and real-time access for all clients that uh, attend facilities in Ghana. As a conclusion, we think that uh, we can improve data accuracy and usability if we are able to sources of NCD data into the capacity of the health staff. Ghana has then also the district level and in some instances facilities have uh, HMI services. And so we think if we build their capacity to be able to uh, do some analysis with what data already exists in the national uh, uh, HMI, it would encourage uh, uh, and thereby improving the use of data that is already existing on our system. And then, of course, uh, we want to be able to continue efforts to train personnel and also improve on consolidation of the systems that already exist as we learn from other countries to be able to have a holistic picture of NCDs in Ghana as a whole. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Oswald. Do we have any questions for our last speaker or any questions for the, the broader group as we have about five minutes before close here? Rashad, I see your hand is up. Not sure if you can uh, unmute. Helen, can you unmute for shot? Working on it now. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That was very, very exciting. Uh, uh, you know, experience of the digitalization at the facility level. Uh, just uh, there is no question. Just uh, one comment that we are going to. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm a far shot. Far shot. Far. I'm a scientist in uh, World Health Organization, uh, working in NCD department in uh, in WHO headquarters. Uh, the the news is uh, that we are going to be next week in Ghana to implement uh, the end user testing on the, the 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 platform that has been developed by the colleagues uh, in the system and going to be used by Ministry of Health to evaluate the level of the uh, flow of data and also flow of patient com compatibility with the indicators and so on. And uh, also uh, one item that we are going to check and i'm encouraging the all is uh, uh to to think about this is about the dashboard that would be very practical for the uh for the um uh for the people who are working at the facility for example i know i've been in Ethiopia several times and i saw that they have uh you know targets at the facility level which is wonderful but it is on the paper and it is not easy to be followed by people who are working at the facility as a health professional and the, probably uh, the health information officer yes but for health professional like physician or physician assistant or midwives uh, are not easy to uh, to handle this data uh, as a daily um, uh, you know practice uh, so uh, brian probably in one of the meetings possible it would be great for us to have a chance to present also the, the new dashboard that we developed. Uh, we call it Action Plan Developer that helping uh, 
helping people in the facility to compare their results easily with the with the results uh, that uh, achieved by the other facilities uh, or at the district level or other facilities within their own province level uh, and to to be able to improve the system and uh, because we call it action plan developer because we are also suggesting some interventions to improve the uh, the the indicator when it comes uh, you know uh, in the in the level that it is not desirable so i will stop here and uh, thank you so much and hopefully we can uh, provide some feedbacks about the both initiatives that we have uh, one is uh, end user testing that we had the experience first in ethiopia in close collaboration with result to save life and now we are doing it in in ghana and also the second thing is action plan developer. Thank you so much, Brian, for the time that you provided me. So thank you very much, Farshad, for the comment. I look forward to hearing more about those initiatives and hopefully uh, we can collaborate with the HISP Center and other HISPs on uh, learning more about them and putting them through uh, country implementations. Um, I think it also connects to uh, Nora's comment that she dropped into the chat as well that uh, in general, NCD data is needed for both public health and patient care. And sometimes we, we might be able, we might be conflating the two um, and same with, uh, you know, performance dashboards as well at the facility level. Um, they need to both track individual patients and also um, understand the, uh, the NCD dynamics at a, at a local level and uh, compare them with other groups. Um, we also have a question from uh, Michael here as well for, uh, for Oswald. Um, uh, I'll just read it out now as the quickest. Um, Oswald, if you wouldn't mind um, sharing, are you working towards disaggregating the data, the NCD data in Ghana already? It seems like it's mostly um, aggregates at the moment. So maybe that means either uh, landless or disaggregating by categories. Yes, so there is already some work going on uh, to disaggregate. Uh, what we have aggregate is already disaggregated by sex and age, but there is some tracker we're going on to have it in granular form beyond the event-based data set that we have available. There's some work going on already uh, with tracker data on NCD. Thank you. Thank you for the response. Um, are there any other questions? before we wrap up here. <laughs> good, good point, Nora. There's unfortunately not much time, more time to discuss about the general data quality concerns and also use of uh, NCD data. But uh, that's that's one reason why we wanted to uh, to do these assessments to be to see what's already uh, ongoing and then uh, start planning some strategies. So that's a, a good next step that we can we can take for another time. Um, but that's about all the time we have now. I just want to uh, give one more round of thanks for our presenters today, um, Seed, JP, Gift, uh, Noel, and Oswald, as well as our sponsors at NORAD for making this uh, this webinar possible. I hope you all have a have a great day, and thank you for your um, for very interesting questions and your collaboration in this. Um, so take care, all, and have a great afternoon. <laughs>